Ah. Well, here are your trolls. Come on. Get up, old stone. We're forgetting our family history. These must be the very three trolls that were caught by Gandalf, quarreling over the right way to cook 13 dwarves and one hobbit. <laughs> I had no idea we were anywhere near the place. Oh, we know Bilbo's story well. Yeah, you're forgetting not only your family history, but all you ever knew about trolls. It's broad daylight with a bright sun today, and yet you try to scare me with a tale of live trolls waiting for us in the glade. <laughs> in any case, you might have noticed that one of them has an old bird's nest behind his ear. That would be a most uh, unusual ornament for a live troll. In the afternoon, they went on down the woods, probably following the very track that Gandalf, Bilbo, and the dwarves had used many years before. In the early evening, the road lay quiet under long shadows, and they were beginning to look out for a place off the road where they could camp for the night when they heard a sound which brought fear to their hearts. Well, that doesn't sound to me like a black rider's horse. You never know, though. No, you don't. Hush! While I listen to the ground. Why, I do believe... Hello there! Hello there! Suddenly into view came a white horse, gleaming in the shadows, running swiftly. In the dusk, its head stall flickered and flashed as if it were studded with gems like living stars. The rider's cloak streamed behind him and his hood was thrown back. His golden hair flowed shimmering in the wind of his speed. To Frodo, it appeared that a white light was shining through the form and raiment of the rider as if through a thin veil. This is Glorfindel, who dwells in the house of Elrond. Hail and well met at last, Aragorn. I was sent from Rivendell to look for you and the hobbits. We feared that you were in danger upon the road. Then Gandalf has reached Rivendell? No, he hadn't when I departed. But that was nine days ago. Elrond received news that troubled him. Some of my kindred traveling in your land learned that things were amiss and sent messages as swiftly as they could. They said that the nine were abroad, and that you were astray bearing a great burden without guidance, for Gandalf had not returned. I left a token on the road at the last bridge. Three of the servants of Sauron were on the bridge, and I pursued them westward. But come, there is no time for further news. We must risk the peril of the road and go. There are five behind us, and when they find your trail upon the road, they will ride like the wind. I fear we may find the ford is already held against us. Come! My master is sick and wounded. He can't go on riding after nightfall. He needs rest. Oh, let me look. We were attacked at our camp on Weathertop. Here is the hilt, at least, of the knife which wounded him. Mm. There are evil things written on this hilt, though maybe your eyes cannot see them. Keep it, Aragorn, till we reach the house of Elrond. But be wary and handle it as little as you may. Alas, the wounds of this weapon are beyond my skill to heal. I will do what I can, but all the more do I urge you now to go on without rest. Let me see. Oh, oh, that feels less chill. The pain is easier. I see you all more clearly than before. Uh. Yet I fear this wound. Come, you shall ride my horse. I shan't ride him if I am to be carried off to Rivendell or anywhere else, leaving my friends behind in danger. I doubt very much if your friends would be in danger if you were not with them. The pursuit would follow you and leave us in peace. It is you, Frodo, and that which you bear that brings us all in peril. Well, then, I will mount if I can. Uh, 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 uh. Glorfindel only allowed two brief halts during the day's march, and Frodo's pain had redoubled. During the day, things about him faded to shadows of ghostly gray, so that he almost welcomed the coming of night. <sighs> Our peril will be greatest just ere we reach the river, for my heart warns me that the pursuit is now swift behind us, and other danger may be waiting by the ford. Faster now. Faster. The road was still running swiftly downhill. Then at the bottom of a sharp incline, they saw before them a long, flat mile, and beyond that, the ford of Rivendell. 
On the other side of the river was a steep brown bank threaded by a winding path, and behind that the tall mountains climbed shoulder above shoulder and peak beyond peak into the fading sky. Wait. Listen. Oh. Fly! Fly! The enemy is upon us! The white horse leaped forward. The hobbits ran down the slope. Glorfindel and Strider followed as rear guard. They were only halfway across the flat when suddenly there was a noise of horses galloping. Out of the hole in the trees they had just left rode a rider. He reined his horse in and halted, swaying in his saddle. Another followed him, and then another, and then again two more. Ride forward, Frodo! Ride! I... I can't seem to... I can't seem to... At the same moment as the white horse sprang away and sped along the last lap of the road with Frodo clutching his mane, the riders leaped down the hill in pursuit. To Frodo's dismay, no sooner had the riders left the trees behind him than four more suddenly appeared. Two rode towards him and two galloped madly towards the ford to cut off his escape. Frodo looked back for a moment over his shoulder. He could no longer see his friends. The riders behind were falling back. He looked forward and hope faded. There seemed no chance of reaching the ford before he was cut off by the others. They had cast aside their hoods and cloaks and were robed in white and gray. Swords were naked in their pale hands. Helms were on their heads. Their cold eyes glittered and they called to him with fell voices. A breath of deadly cold pierced Frodo like a spear as with a last spurt like a flash of fire the elf horse speeding as if on wings passed right before the face of the foremost rider and into the ford. He was across the ford but the pursuers were close behind. At the top of the bank the horse halted back to the land of Mordor and follow me no more. Fair. You shall have neither the ring nor me. Oh. Ah! Ah! <laughs> With his last failing senses, Frodo heard cries, and it seemed to him that he saw, beyond the riders that hesitated on the shore, a shining figure of white light. And behind it ran small, shadowy forms of waving flames that flared red in the gray mist that was falling over the world. The black horses were filled with madness, and leaping forward in terror, they bore their riders into the rushing flood. Their piercing cries were drowned in the sudden onset of the roaring river as it carried them away. And Frodo felt himself falling, and the roaring and confusion seemed to rise and engulf him together with his enemies. He heard and saw no more. <laughs> 